We're live now. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the ICHRRF Speaking Up series. My name is Dr. Adityanji, and I am the president and chairperson board of directors of the ICHRRF. On behalf of the board of directors and the executive team of the ICHRRF, I invite you for our monthly speaking series oration. A little bit about International Commission for Human Rights and Religious Freedom. We are a US based nonprofit organization focused on upholding human rights and religious freedom through continuous monitoring, policy intervention, and collaboration. We are focused on educational, research, legal, and human rights advocacy and charitable purposes. And we strive to be an advocate for the human rights and religious freedom of all the underrepresented communities across the entire world. We do believe that humankind can no longer afford to be selectively vocal about rights of only a specific set of people. A human and just world requires fair treatment of all living creatures. Our focus is on rights of indigenous people, ancient people, their freedom, their free speech, and their cultural preservation. And of course, this is our logo. And we are meeting here on a very special topic. Our distinguished speaker today is Professor Sen Neve. He will be speaking on China's repression of religious freedom and persecution of Falun Gong. Today is Saturday, October 1st, 2022, and it is 10 a.m. Eastern Daytime in U.S. and 7.30 p.m. in India. As you will see him, this is Professor Sen Ni. He is Professor of Engineering at Catholic University of America. His areas of research include energy systems, combustion engineering, thermal sciences, multi-phase mechanics, and environmental engineering. He's a scholar and researcher, having authored and co-authored more than 100 scientific research papers, a college-level textbook, one computer code, and he holds seven U.S. and foreign patents. He's the recipient of Lectureship Award of the United Nations, Charles Carmen Teaching Excellence Award at School of Engineering at CUA, and honorary professorship of six universities in Taiwan and mainland China. He initiated and served as the sole principal investigator of 20 government industry-funded research projects, with a total fund funding exceeding 3.5 million US dollars. He is a tenured professor and he serves the fifth term over the last 14 years as the chairperson of mechanical engineering department and various committees of academic affairs at the university, which is the Catholic University of America. So he is a scholar par excellence, but he is just not an academic. He's also a very enlightened human being. He's a very active advocate and speaker on religious freedom, human rights, Chinese affairs, and he's a dedicated community leader. A little bit about today's topic. I'm not going to preempt Professor Ni, but I will give a brief introduction. China essentially is a fundamentalist theocratic state. Where the only state religion is Marxism with Chinese characteristics. 
that's the creed of the CCP, Communist Party of China. No other religious, philosophical, or spiritual practice is tolerated. And China gives leeway only as long as the religious assemblies do not grow beyond a certain point where it does not threaten the theocratic orthodoxy of Communist Party of China or CCP. This insecurity drives a system of monitoring and repression that can brutally crush even peaceful spiritual assemblies. What are the implications of this? We'll hear from Professor Sen Nye. But introducing to our audience, we say China's repression of religious freedom. But I don't want our viewers to believe that China is Chinese Communist Party. They are entirely different things. China is a great civilizational nation that has been occupied, abused, and misused by a party, Communist Party of China. Just to show you Falun Gang members, you know, these are the people praying and meditating. You see, again, people in Beijing, you know what that building is. Falun Gong used to be known originally as Falun Dafa. So kids are saying that it's not a dangerous thing, it's a good thing. Chinese Communist Party's persecution of Falun Gong has gone to the extent that more than 1.5 million people have been killed and their organs have been harvested. And like ancient Indic religious traditions, Falun Gong is rooted in yoga-like practices and believes in truthfulness, benevolence, and forbearance. Before I give the floor to Professor Senye, there are some housekeeping rules. I want everyone to keep themselves muted to avoid noise interference, and I'm going to do that as soon as I finish myself. Please keep your cell phone setting to vibration mode. When our distinguished speaker is speaking, please do not on any grounds interrupt him. If you interrupt him, you'll be kicked out of the platform. Questions will be taken only after the speaker is done with the lecture. All the questions are moderated through the chat function. Please be precise and very specific in asking questions. Don't send a monologue or a lecture in the form of comments on the chat function. It has to be brief and precise function. Only people who identify themselves will be allowed to pose questions. And lastly, this session is being recorded. It will be available on our website and our YouTube channel within 24 hours. So without further ado, I invite Professor San Ni to talk about China's persecution of religious freedom and specific persecution of Falun Gong members there's no better person who can speak on this issue because Professor Senni himself is a practitioner of Falun Gong. So, sir, the floor is yours. Please go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Adi Yaji. Um, <clears throat> it, it is my great pleasure and honor to, st to speak to this uh, um, <clears throat> elite groups of Indian Americans. And I want to echo that uh, what uh, being said earlier, I'm a Chinese American. I love China. I love Chinese people. I love Chinese culture, but I'm against the Communist Party, Chinese Communist copy, CCP. Okay, I prepare a few slides, about 20 of them. Uh, I want to go through that with perhaps with photos 
and <clears throat> diagram so you, it will be more interesting. Can I uh, sh share that with you? So, can you see it? Please confirm. Okay, good, good. Yeah, again, the, my, my topic uh, today was um, uh, China's re repression of religious freedoms and the persecution of uh, of Falun Gong. Uh, uh, I want to have three three part of the talk. The first part to introduce what is Falun Gong, what is the Qigong fevers in China, or what it's about, what is different of Falun Gong with other Qigong. The second part is I want to talk about the persecution, the very severe persecution of this large group of people in China in the past 23 years, particularly uh, the massive forced organ harvesting, kill people for the organ demands. Then I also want to share with you that Falun Gong is not only the victimized group, we do every possible peaceful way to resist this persecutions, this anti-persecutions of peaceful resistance. Has, I want to pick two areas to show you, and this hopefully will bring some hope to those uh, victimized group and the world. One is about the uh, Tuida movement, uh, which is uh, quitting Communist Party and affiliates movement. Another is uh, uh, music and dance Shen Yun group uh, can see the true China's peaceful, religious, okay, spiritual China before communism. Okay, that's my five five areas. The so about uh, uh, th there is about uh, one hundred million Falun Gong practitioner in China being uh, labeled with prisoners of conscience, which probably is the largest group of prisoner of conscience in China and maybe in the world today. So I want to briefly touch upon what is the Falun Gong and why and how people practice it. And uh, the good time, the first, first seven years before 1999, the popularity in China and why CCP choose to persecute the group. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, the, the first is, uh, it, it was uh, throughout this 5,000 5, years of Chinese uh, history, so it is part of the culture to do the mind and body practice. Just the process of perfecting or refining mind and body in ancient history was called as cultivation. Okay, cultivation practice. But this cultivations under communist ruling has become political sensitive. So the modern days people choose Qi Gong as uh, the first phase of cultivations, which is more neutral, will not be cracked down. So there was a Qi Gong fever in China, okay, in the late 70s, 80s, and 90s, until 1999 was cracked down there was about uh, more than 500 different types of Qigong practice, including Falun Gong in the, in the peak time. So that was the time when uh, Chinese people, they, they do all kinds of practice with or without uh, uh, the, the fans or staff or, or, or rod in the park in early morning in every green land in China, there are people practice different kind of qigong in China in the past. This phenomena still present in Taiwan. That's the place I come from. In Taiwan, early in the morning, in the park, as long as the green grass, you see people gathering around there to do the exercise. Still happening there. Then Falun Gong was introduced as the later phase of the Qigong fever. So that's uh, Qigong, the Qigong fever is uh, uh, the, the peak is around uh, uh, late 90, 
1980s. Okay, as I mentioned, there are more than 500 different types, including Tai Chi, including yoga, including Yuan Ji Wu, a different kind of things. Then Falun Gong was introduced at the late, late phase of the Qigong fever in May 1992 by Mr. Li Hongzi, who uh, is, uh, uh, is, is from northeastern eastern part of China, from Liaoning, prov uh, Liaoning province, uh, the capital city is Changchun. But it rapidly gained popularity based on the government survey. It's more than 70 or more than 100 million in six years by 1998. It's primarily because of the health benefits uh, to the practitioner of Falun Gong has been open immediately and even dramatically people get the body feet, regain the health. Some patients even recovering from many different types of severe dis illnesses. That is one of the health benefits that attract people's interest and attention. Another is the Falun Gong is different from other types of Qigong is, is particularly uh, emphasis uh, on the morality or to regain the virtual which is a, is a renaissance of uh, traditional Chinese authentic uh, wisdom and values, including, including uh, this uh, uh, strength and uh, honesty, Taoism by Laozi, and uh, compassion and goodness from Buddhism of the Buddha Sakyamuni, then, and also the, the wisdoms to deal with people in a society by with righteousness and tolerance by Confucius, Confucianism. And this uh, Taoism, Buddhism, and Confucianism are the fundamental value system of China for the 5,000 years. And this reno resonates deeply in with people with all across China. So in, uh, uh, in, 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 in in 1999, there will be, the government say there's a more than 70 or 100 million people practice that. And this shows the, the book, the main book, the focal book called Zhuan Fa Lun. Uh, this is the English version, this uh, authentic Chinese versions. The book can be uh, downloaded at uh, um, all the books and the videos of demonstrations and others can be downloaded free of charge from the websites. Okay. Then <laughs> there's, so just uh, like other Qigong, Falun Gong is an authentic Qigong, is an ancient spiritual practice in the Buddhist traditions. It combines meditation and gentle exercise. As a matter of fact, there are five sets of exercises with one city meditations and four standing exercises. The exercises are slow and gentle, similar to yoga or similar to Tai Chi. Um, but in addition to the exercises, there, there is a moral philosophy centered on the tenets of truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. Truthfulness uh, or Zen is uh, just need to be being true or honest, okay, to find out the truth on the journeys of life. The sun is uh, more go with the Buddhism as uh, the compassions, uh, be kind and benevolence, the think about others, uh, being good in the family and in society. And Zen and its uh, tolerance is particularly go with uh, Chinese uh, Confucianism is uh, self-discipline and self-restraint and be patient and if you have a hard time enduring the hardship and forgive others people and be tolerant. The Falun Gong practitioner not only do the five sets of exercises, they, they also practice these three principles in their daily life every day at the, in, the fam, in the families, in the workplace, in the society. Then <laughs> since uh, uh, since after seven years uh, of introductions, the, the number of Falun Gong practitioner grow to about 100 million or at least 70 millions, but based on the government's 
that's uh, 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 that's the rapid growth, which is the fast, fastest the Qigong group uh, in China, probably in, in 5,000 years of Chinese history. But it was cracked down in 1999, and China became the only place that banned the, this Falun Gong. Then Falun Gong practitioners around the world try to do this peaceful anti-persecution and and spread the truth to different parts of the world. And this, I'm showing you some photos that um, Falun Gong being practiced around the world about 140 countries uh, in, United States, in United States. This is a picture in Washington, D.C., the Washington Monuments, the Lincoln Memorial, and uh, Falun Gong practitioner doing the candlelight vigils to memorize, to, to give mem memorations of the of the people tortured to death. Then this is the parade and uh, with the band and the other peoples on the on the street of Washington DC, the capital city. This picture shows the people doing Sydney meditations uh, in Australia in, in the in Sydney, Australia. And this picture is the famous uh, ivory tower in Paris of uh, friends, uh, people are gathering. This uh, this is the picture of the Taiwan where I come from. This is um, uh, this uh, seven thousand people get around the, the freedom freedom square, and on the back is um, Chiang Kai Shei's memorial that people are doing the exercise, and these are the front doors. People are celebrating uh, the Falun Dafa Day, and this is the picture showing that uh, in front of the presidential building in Taipei City. Falun Gong practitioner in Taiwan uh, to, to support and to celebrate this 300 million courageous Chinese cutting ties from the Communist Party. Okay, there's about uh, 500,000 to 800,000 people in Taiwan practice Falun Gong, which is the second largest uh, place with Falun Gong practitioners. And this is the, uh, this is the Falun Gong practitioner gather around to share the experience at the auditoriums of National Taiwan University of my alma mater, with um, eight thousand people attend. In particular, probably of interest to you is the Falun Gong in India, at which you can find detailed information with this website, and uh, there are more and more people get to know about it and uh, doing this uh, gentle exercise. Those are for the uh, school of children's uh, do this is a this is a city meditations this is second exercise okay this is the first exercise by the school kids and in the house family this is a second exercise this is the third exercise even in the military troops and now they they are it's a it's um probably around 140 countries and regions can practice Falun Gong freely, the only one and only place that being uh, uh, being prohibited is uh, men in China. Then uh, there's, uh, there's, there's great health benefits and, uh, and good embrace of the authentic Chinese traditional wisdom and values. There are 100 millions or in that order of magnitudes of the people Primary is mentoring people practice Falun Gong. This, those, those include uh, uh, college professors, uh, doctors, engineers, and the government um, officers, housewives, students, and um, even military officers. They practice on that. It's not only in that, uh, not only this 100 millions, and they are uh, family members, close family members, close friends, and co workers. So why, why the communists choose to target this 100 millions, actually probably 400 million with this close relatives and friends to target on that, to, to crack down on that. So uh, Falun Gong in July, 1999, turned from the most popular uh, Qigong group in China overnight into the enemy of the state, enemy of CCP. 
Okay. So it's it's very sad, but uh, nobody knows how evil think, uh, and there are a lot of people ask questions, and I I consolidate uh, four reasons of the rationale probably behind the the, the severe crackdown. Then <clears throat> Falun Gong is a Qigong group. Uh, it's also with believe, so it's it's the crackdown of religious freedoms too. Okay, not only human rights abuses. So one of the things is uh, uh, Falun Gong has a uh, massive sewing popularity and rapid growth. It's up to 100 millions by the government. This is the, the central sports commissions of the governments did the survey and report that they are 70 to 100 million uh, Falun Gong practitioner in late 1998. And at that time, the CCP membership, the party members, uh, it's only about 60 million. This uh, this large group of people outside the Communist Party that make them feel uncomfortable. And one thing it's, uh, it's clear that uh, uh, the CCP Communist regime is a totalitarian regime. They want to control everything, not only in the public life, even the private life of people of the society, everything should be under their control. So under communist uh, totalitarian regime, there's no f independent media. There's no, um, there's no independent media. There's, uh, there's no uh, fair judicial systems. So a, a large group in the society, including Falun Gong, if you are not under 100% under their control, then they label you as the state enemy, become their enemy. There's nothing in between. So that's uh, uh, the, the paranoid, the insecure CCP is afraid of not only Falun Gong, any group with larger uh, numbers, they will start to crack down. So Falun Gong was uh, unfortunately one of the reasons I heard that uh, during the crackdown of Qigong, including Falun Gong at that time, there was a group uh, in Beijing, the capital city, a fishing club, fishing club of, the, of those senior people there uh, was cracked down too. And people ask, why are you cracked down this uh, senior uh, old grandpa and grandma? And the answer from one of the official of CCP say that you do fishing is okay, but when you do fishing, you talk. You, have, you make friends, you complain, complain, criticize the, the government policy, and this is not allowed. So the fishing club, senior fishing club in Beijing was also cracked down at the same time. So all these 400 uh, uh, or 500 Qigong groups are all being cracked down. If um, you choose to uh, yield as uh, under the control, tight control of communists, such as Tai Chi, and others you still can practice. Okay. So the second second reason is Falun Gong's uh, is completely independent from CCP's control and with large num uh, large numbers of, of people. Okay. And they, they are in the mainstream society from all walks of life in the society, <clears throat> even today. The, th the third reason is uh, the guiding principle of Falun Gong is truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance, which in com compatible or inherently conflict with the salvage political ideology and the ethics of CCP. This is the, what uh, CCP, the, the political movement of great cultural revolutions in, of 10 years, okay, in mid-60s to mid-70s, they destroys the, the culture, Chinese culture, in a great way. The, the, the school or the university at that time being stopped for six years. During that six years, none, none Chinese go to any school because the school shut down for six years. It's great cultural revolutions. Then the, the Falun Gong's teaching is uh, truthfulness, compassion, tolerance, embrace the, the Taoists, Buddhists, and uh, Confucianisms. It's the regain of the of the authentic traditional Chinese cultures and value systems and wisdoms. It, it's um, it's uh, it's not uh, secure for them. 
So communists uh, think that this group may one day overthrow the governments, even though they did all the investigation and find out this is a peaceful group who have no interest in the power. But they don't believe there are people who are not interested in the fame and fortune and powers. Number four is the, the particular person, Jiang Zemin, who is uh, the head of Communist Party, who, who is the number one person in China. The jealousy, he's uh, very weak. He's a very weak leader. The jealousy and the and he used Falun Gong as a, his political move, motivations to knock down his opponents in the party. Okay, so basically, it's still unknown uh, to why the evil communists crack down on the large group, uh, but uh, this probably is the reason I collect that. Then the crackdown was very severe. It's, they targeted 100 million people, but they all have family members. And uh, so the crackdown, at least one third of the populations, China has uh, 1.3 billion at that time. This is the largest campaign of religious persecutions and the human rights atrocity happening in China in the past 23 years. Okay, the, for instance, the Uyghurs has been, uh, uh, got a lot of attentions. There's about um, uh, 10 to 15 million uh, Uyghurs in Xinjiang regions. Um, for Tibetans uh, in uh, Xizang regions, there are, uh, there's about uh, 7 million people. For Hong Kong people being cracked down, so there's about 7 million people. Right now, they are targeting uh, at uh, walls against across the Taiwan street to people in Taiwan. That's 23 million. And Falun Gong is uh, 70 to 100 million is much larger than that. It's the the largest uh, the, the religious freedoms and human rights atrocity uh, in China, maybe in the world today. So millions of innocent and mainstream people in China uh, has been fired from the job expelled from the school, being kidnapped, detained, imprisoned, jailed, tortured, okay, psychiatric mistreatments and killed simply because they practice Falun Gong. They don't want to give up. They don't want to give up the belief of truthfulness, compassion, tolerance. So th there was a movement later on to, in the last uh, few 10 years, and uh, Chinese people stand up courageously to suit those perpetrators, perpetrators, uh, those are the leader, least of leaders of uh, uh, giving the orders or, or, or mobilize the launch of the crackdowns. So there will be, um, uh, th that time, uh, five years ago, there was uh, almost 210,000 plaintiffs, okay, filed the lawsuit of um, complaints of 177 cases, okay, against the, the leaders of the Communist Party. Uh, among this uh, plenty, there are more than 50,000 people being detained, brainwashed for years, and uh, 22,000 uh, was being put into the forced labors and prisons to do the job free. And um, for that group, there's more, it's close to 4,000 people being killed and uh, more than 600 people being incarcerated in mental hospitals. Okay. The, let me summarize the persecutions. Uh, this includes uh, both physical torture and psychiatric torture and evil torture, I will say that. And this is diagram, the, the pie charts uh, from United Nations. Uh, it's about 10 years ago, then there was a UN repertoire of torture, finally get visa to visit China. Okay, and he, after the, his visit, he write the reports to UN that indicate those victims of tortures in China, two thirds, 66% of the victims of tortures are Falun Gong practitioners. And along with others, uh, right lawyers and uh, and, Bud uh, and Uyghurs and Tibetans. Okay, so uh, it's not being heard that much um, like Tibetans or the Uyghurs, but Falun Gong is the main uh, the group of people being uh, uh, mistreated. The United States of um, the state government, uh, state departments, uh, they had a report, annual report in the recent year. One of the reports say that uh, uh, over the over, over the past uh, 
20 years of 20 some years of uh, persecution of Falun Gong, then they are always have a 450,000 up to 1 million people being detained of Falun Gongs. Okay, all the times. But anyway, the Falun Gong being declared, declared as the enemy of the state by the CCP. So, so it was instructed it's not a crime to torture Falun Gong, even to death. If Falun Gong being tortured to death, say that he committed suicide. That was direct order from the central government. There are more than 100 different methods of physical tortures, uh, beatings, uh, sleep depri deprivations, shocking with electric uh, batons, high voltage, like 10,000 volts, electric batons, then uh, force feeding, confinements in small, dark cage, handcuffs to, to the wall or the ceiling for a long period of time for days, sexual assault, uh, gang rapes of um, the females uh, practitioners, directed by the policemen or the labor camp guard. So this case, this was the the the, the case was uh, this lady is Gao Rong Rong was um, was uh, several all kinds of tortures. He was uh, he was get electric shocked of ten ten baton at the same time all over the body, including the face. This was the this was the burned face after a few days recovery. Her face was swelling up as a big ball. So he finally died uh, in the prison while the international community rescued him. I also spent a lot of time trying to rescue her, but uh, end up with uh, he's still dying in the, in the prison. The second types of uh, persecution was uh, uh, psychiatric torture. And there are millions of the Falun Gong practitioners were forced into brainwashing sessions to force them to renounce the faith in Falun Gong. Okay, and most people don't. Then the healthy practitioners being regarded uh, as mental illness and sent to the mental health care facility for mental tortures. Many practitioners uh, in, in, in detention or jail being injected by those unknown dangerous mind altering drugs known to damage the central nerve systems. And they also use electric shock as a therapy to 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 kill this the so-called illness. Then at, what was a confirmed cases reported with with all the detail. There are loose and death tool was close to five thousand, but there are ten hundred times more of unconformed torture to death. And one of the one of the tortures uh, uh, as um, yeah, and the, I mentioned earlier is the forced organ harvesting. Okay, these uh, of leaving Falun Gong practitioners. Then forced organ harvesting was first review, revealed in 2006 when there's a woman's called Annie. She's a, she's a staff in the hospital. Claim there are four, more than 4,000 Falun Gong practitioners were killed for their organs at her hospital, Sujatan Hospital in Northeast China. And her husband is an eye doctor surgeon and had committed to, to remove corneas, corneas uh, of the eyes for, from more than 2,000 leaving Falun Gong practitioner. So she testifies in front of the White House, uh, the Lafayette Park, and disclosed this false organ harvesting. And very soon, uh, all, all these uh, NGOs, uh, the governments, uh, and the, to, to look into this case. And, during that time, there was a veteran military doctors in China who probably practiced Falun Gong to claim that such atrocity of killing people for organs were taking place in 36 concentration camps throughout China. The largest camp was held 120,000 Falun Gong practitioner in Northeast China. He witnessed the massive transport of prisoners of conscience across the country in cattle trains at night. So the investigation go on of this um, things, of uh, allegations right away. 
and people like um, my friends placed a call to Chinese hospital pretending a patient uh, shopping for kidneys and livers for prices. It's to our horrors, to the world horror that one doctor after another openly confirmed, yes, we got Falun Gong in stock, just come in and we can get your organs within a week or two. The organs of Falun Gong are clean uh, because Falun Gong don't smoke, don't drink, uh, no drugs and doing the exercise, the quality of the organs of uh, uh, life, uh, Falun Gong is high quality, is premium organs. The medical experts say that it is completely impossible for the one week or two to get their organs unless they have a huge stock of leaving, leaving organ donor, which is the jailed Falun Gong practitioners. And this diagram shows the, the waiting times of organs. Then for United States, it probably is even today, if you want to, if you wait on the kidneys, it takes about two to three years to, to wait online to get the kidneys. In China, so it's just two weeks. Okay, two to three weeks, they can guarantee that you get uh, the one match with your blood and T-shirt. For livers, uh, the U.S. has uh, need to wait one and a half to two years. In China, again, it's just a few weeks, a week or two or three, they can guarantee to give the livers match with your blood type and others. Then, so there's a, and it's it's kind of a, it's shocking that um, it's very valuable of the human organs, the corneas of the eyes, it costs thirty thousand dollars U.S. dollars a pair. The 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 heart is uh, around one hundred fifty thousand dollars, and the lung is uh, one hundred sixty thousand dollars U.S. dollars. The liver is close to one hundred thousand dollars. The kidneys is about uh, sixty thousand dollars. Okay, and um, and the example of the sh of the sewing of the transplant, I can tell you that before the crackdown in 1999, China, they don't have medical expertise to do organ transplant. So things 1976 to 90s, in 15 years, there were only in total in the country, 57 liver transplant in the country, the whole country. Then in eight years from 91 to 98, they were another 78 liver transplant in the whole country. But since the crackdown, they have hold, they have detained millions, tens of millions of Falun Gong practitioners from 1999 to 2006. Again, another eight years, they report that the, the, the journal, uh, the, this government report, they have 14,000 liver transplants done. Okay, which is much, 400 times more than the, 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 the past. In 2006 and 2007, that one year alone, they have done 4,200 liver transplant in one year in China. For one particular hospital, Tianjin first hospital in the Tianjin city, they usually do 5,000 liver transplant per year. The peak time they did 8,000 liver transplant per year in one hospital. And the perpetrator, Dr. Huang, Huang Jiefu, he's a liver expert, is the deputy secretary of uh, public health. He's the, 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 one of the bad guys. He's a liver doctors. He himself claimed in the paper and he constantly did 500 liver transplant per year himself. So the the organ transplants, uh, forced organ transplant being sowing exponentially from few hundreds to uh, ten thousands, uh, no, one hundred thousand per year. Then and th there was uh, two good reports. One is the final harvest, the comprehensive investigation into Falun Gong, uh, CCP's live organ harvesting of Falun Gong. You can find from this, the websites. And this is this book documents all the details, okay, of the organ harvesting crime, the mass murder by demand. Another is the bloody harvest by David Kilgore and David Mattis. 
and the slaughter by Eastern governments and in 2016. This is the first is 2015. You can down, you can find that free from this both reports in 2016 documents in details. Okay, they are about 9,500 surgeons with certificate who can do the trans organ transplant. But before the crackdown, there are only a handful of medical doctors can do the transplant. But after the crackdown for this, for 10, 20 years, they were close to 10,000 medical doctors, surgeons with certificate, they can do the organ transplant. And in the past, before the crackdown, there's only a few just single digit hospital can do the, those big hospitals can do the organ transplant. But today they are more than, they are about 900 military hospital or civilian hospital with government certificate, they can operate organ transplant since 2000. So collectively, and uh, they have the, they have the capacity estimate to be uh, 1.5 or 2.5 million organ transplant was done in 15 years from 2000 to 2015. On the average, about uh, 160,000 to 100,000 organ transplant done in the country per year. Okay, and this will be those uh, reputable books you can find, you can find details. So the whole world to get shocked and try to urge the awareness and let people, particularly the governments or NGOs, the media to cover the story to help uh, help to end this false organ harvesting. This is a new form of evil on earth in modern days. It was never happening in human history that kill people alive for the organs. And this is a, a rally uh, in front of the uh, the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. Okay, then uh, after saying that the persecution is severe persecution, including organ harvesting, uh, I want to also share with you a few minutes of the peaceful resistance of Falun Gong around the world and in China, um, particularly in two areas. One is the, the trade out movement. Okay, it is all because of this book. It's called Night Commentary on the Communist Party, published in 2004 by the Epoch of Time. This is the first book with nine chapters that shocked the, the Chinese community in the whole world with historical facts uh, that being covered up by the CCP. This book systematically exposed the CCP's the histories of deceptions, the violence, how many people and family killed and called for the world to see CCP, the true nature of evil and uh, the doomed fate of collapsing. And uh, with all the facts and de you know, this is a number one, what used to be number one, the prohibited book in China and in the world. And you can, you can download it free from the internet. Then this, when Chinese people, including Chinese uh, CCP officer, when they read the book, okay, they, sh they are shaking to learn the truth. And they realize that they are in, they got into this evil dark group of uh, communists. And so they decide no more, no more darkness, no more crime. I want to come out. So this was the so-called the Dang movement. Tui Dang is two Chinese characters, Tui Dang. Tui means withdraw or quit or cut the tie. Dang means party, which is communist party and these affiliates, particularly the Chinese Communist Party for Adults, Chinese Youth League for teenagers, high school and the middle school students, and Communist Young Pioneer for elementary schools. Okay. So when people was forced to join or they volunteered to join this three organization, they need to make a vow to devote their life to CCP. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So when Chinese people read about the book, this book was widespread being distributed in China. If uh, people risk their life and freedoms on that, if you are caught by CCP police um, that you hold this book, uh, you are automatically go to jail for three years. 
there's another book I want to introduce is uh, how the spect specter of communism is ruling the world it was published uh, four years ago uh, to the free world in English then uh, showing that how communism uh, this ideology penetrate into United States and the free world is good to know. So this book uh, triggers the, the big uh, peaceful grassroots movement of quitting the CCP. For instance, this is one of the famous uh, sightseeing places in Shandong province. People just put the, the pen saying, come to, okay, come to read the night commentary. Okay, heaven going to condemn CCP. This is on the one, one of the high, highway streets they are hanging in 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 a banners uh, heaven going to condemn CCP in China. Those are the Chinese dollar. They put the words uh, uh, I'm a Mr. Liu from Beijing capital area. I want to quit the party. He he make his voice uh, known in public, and uh, and th this is the and and this is the the community in on the wall when people say there's at that time there's 68 million people already quit the party to to save their life and families in Henan province. This is one of the the CCP's um, government of uh, buildings being posted, uh, the bulletin board being posted a, a page of this book and uh, and the trade movement. Then when people. Uh, when people withdraw from the party, they can get a certificate. If they withdraw with real name, they can use the, their nicknames to protect them, uh, their safety. If they use a real name, they can get a certificate of Tweidang, uh, Tweidang that has 16 digits of uh, and numeric numbers of that. And today's in the United States, the, the USCIS, the immigration office recognize uh, this one because U.S. laws prohibit the Communist Party to enter and to stay. So those are the in everywhere in China, uh, outside the world, in Paris, uh, in Sweden, uh, in New York, in Hong Kong, in Los Angeles, Taipei, and Taiwan, people, the volunteers are helped to spread the news about uh, the crimes and the evil nature of communists and uh, and doomed to collapse and fate of communists. So let people, particularly the tourists from China, to see. And this is the old lady in Taiwan, hold a poster to allow this a group of uh, a dozens of tourists from China in Taipei City watch the two truths. One of the things, the interesting things, is is not going to happen in the United States. That when people come from the, uh, America to abroad, they won't have interest to knowing what's going on in the United States. But for Chinese, it's different. When Chinese come out, go abroad, outside China, one of the things they like to learn is about their own country. They want to learn about China, how the outside, the true information about China. So when you hold the posters of the certain things, they all come to watch. When you move, everybody move with you. <laughs> this is true, okay? And this is a different thing. So people help uh, Chinese tourists uh, out, once get out to learn about uh, China. There are more than 200 such sites in those sightseeing places around the around the world, with volunteer every day showing the information. And there are half billion, no, no it's uh, uh, just about 40 million, at least a million levels of volunteers, a Falun Gong practitioner inside China spread out the, the truth uh, about CCP and Falun Gong. So this is a diagram showing how this number of withdrawal grow every month. Okay. It starts from zero, a few few tens of them, it's go to hundreds, thousands, to right now it's every day, there are more than 50,000 people withdraw from this uh, one of the three groups or all of them. So for instance, uh, in 2014, uh, on one particular day, there's there are 111, 115,000 people, courageous Chinese men and women, quit the Communist Party and affiliates. Okay, for that particular month, there are more than three million people choose that things, cut the tie, and uh, from communism and regain, regain the conscience and regain the moral. Uh, like on 2000. 2013, June, June, one of the day, 
they have more than 5,000 Communist Party member quit the Communist Party in public with real names in Hunan province inside China. Okay. And uh, today, until today, there are more than 400 million, 402 million courageous Chinese has cut the tie from the communists. And this is the, th this is the hope of China. Okay, this will be the, the, the grassroots uh, uh, cutting tie from the communists and want to learn things uh, out of the uh, mind control uh, at a rate about uh, two, three millions per month. 90, 90, 95% is from Mandarin Chinese. Then they are the, the hope of for the future. They, they can, uh, they serve the fertile grounds for whatever freedoms or democracy, uh, human rights or rule of laws in China. This will be the least uh, cost of s social cost to disintegrate communism. When, when one by one they leave the Communist Party, then communists will collapse. Okay, then so so right now it's about two hundred. Uh, yeah, it's just <clears throat> like yesterday there are about fifty thousand courageous Chinese post their statement of withdrawal on the website. You cannot just simply say you has to post your statements. The statement will say I'm so and so. You can use nickname if you want in which part of China. And what is the reason I want to withdraw? Withdraw from what three organizations? Each statement <clears throat> will count. Okay, so this number is 402 million more than the population of our country in the United States. It's, uh, it's based on this statement, withdrawal statements. And you can see that statements today in the past 16 years. They are one of the one on the website you can view and people can view which particular statement is his or hers on the state. So this trade on tidal wave, it uh, frightens the CCP. They are very afraid of this. They don't, they, they don't talk about it. They keep the secrets. They are afraid of people following that. And, uh, w and the people outside world that this is New York City, when people have parade with 400 million people reached that day, the, the, in one of the in August, they have a parade and let everybody know more and more about it. Okay. And for the trade on movements, um, uh, there is a comprehensive report on the trade on movements about eight chapters. Okay. About 150 pages you can free download it from this website. Okay. It's talk about all the details. What are the composition of those people, courageous people from all walk of life? Okay. From all part of the China coming out every day, they want to be out. They don't want to be part of the communism. Then, <clears throat> and the two more final things I want to mention is uh, how people inside China learn about the truth. We on the outside, okay, abroad from men in China, we have freedom to, uh, to serve on the internet, to collect information. But China put the, the firewall. They spent about 4 billion Chinese dollars to long time ago, right now it's more, set up the firewall to block the internet, block the fear flow of information. They have a strong censorship, cens censorship systems. Even today, the President Xi, the head of the uh, Communist Party, if you are communicating with his name, Xi Jinping, Xi Jinping, your information will be blocked. Okay, that is a sensitive word too. So night commentaries, trade on movements, organ harvesting and freedom, democracy, human rights, all are being censored, filtered. But there are, there are many genius, uh, uh, genius engineers, scientists, um, most of them Falun Gong practitioners, and they knock down the door, knock, knock a hole on this firewall, allow Chinese people to see the world. This famous five software can be free downloaded by Chinese people inside China, Break through the firewalls, a free gate, free gate gardens, fire of Phoenix, uh, borderless, and the world gate. They can be free downloaded by any Chinese people. Once they download it, when they when they serve on the internet, they can go to see the outside world. Okay, and CCP cannot track them down because there's a mirror image that indicated he is over 
uh, he's over like India's to that. Actually, he's inside China. But anyway, they had about seven million netizens, usually younger younger generations, particularly people in the learning people in the city. They get uncensored information from internet by anti blockage softwares that developed to produce free by Falun Gong practitioner to them. For those older people, elder people uh, living in the rural areas uh, or suburban, they are not uh, very computer savvy. Then about 600 million of them, they can listen to the shortwave radio or watch satellite TVs. And uh, it is very popular in, for Chinese to have a radio set, shortwave radio set. It's not in the United States, but they are there. So they listen very patiently to adjust the frequency to find the uh, the station they want to hear. So, so there's this satellite antennas outside China. This one is particular from Taiwan. We can broadcast the short wave across that into China for people to listen to the uncensored information. Like uh, there's a sound of hope, uh, uh, radio stations, Voice of Americas, Radio Free Asia's, and they broadcast that. The most powerful one is Son of Hope from Falun Gong practitioner. My, my good friend, a colleague, uh, the blind attorney and uh, lawyer, Chen Guangchen, who is um, my colleague uh, at Kassin University. He was uh, in, in China. He's a famous one, defend the, the, the poor and the weak uh, people in China, particularly one child policy. And uh, 15 years ago, then he listened to the Sound of Hope radio through this anti-blockage software for a few years. He understand what's going on in the free world. That's magical things. So 600 million uh, older generations plus uh, listen to the shortwave radio or satellite TV and uh, 700 million younger people in the city and get uh, anti-blockage software to, to see the free free information. This is what's the major anti uh, peaceful anti persecutions uh, undertaking. We're doing that to help the Chinese fellow. One last thing is uh, I wanted uh, people want, want to ask me to briefly just two slides. Uh, my last two slides about the Sengyun performance, and uh, this Sengyun performance. I don't know whether you heard about it. It's a Sengyun group. It's a world class New York based performing arts group of classical Chinese dance and music. And they have now seven equally large troops that tour around the world, including United States and Canada. Uh, it's about 100 major city around the globe, performs uh, more than 700, up to 1,000 shows every year with different programs. And this Sengyun show was uh, very famous right now. It is a brilliant artistic revival Okay, and a celebration of China's rich cultural heritage. But after 70, seven decades of communist ruling, much of this uh, divinely inspired culture, okay, and morality has been destroyed by communists. So when you have a chance, come to uh, to see the same performance at least once in your lifetime, and you can see the information on this uh, website. And this is one of the show of the drummers, the soldiers, drummers in Tang Dynasty about 1300 years ago. That was the most greatest uh, history of China. Then, uh, and this is the the audience in the Lincoln Center of New York City. It's uh, 3,000 people watch the show with live orchestra. The show stage on that, the dance. They were beautiful. Sen Yun, the Sen means the divine, the Yun means uh, uh, the dancing of the divine divine beings. So Sen Yun is the dancing and the music of divine beings. I'm from Washington, D.C. For Washington, D.C., they returned to Kennedy Center for 15 times this, this coming year in January. They have uh, seven shows in a week in January. Just, uh, and this is a very encouraging when people watch Sen Yun, they were understand, oh, this is the China. This is a peace-loving, spiritual, okay, and uh, high moral Chinese, Chinese culture and China. It's 
before communism. It's not what China is very aggressive, very selfish, very, um, <clears throat> yeah, very uh, brutal, the evil deceptions, uh, uh, Communist Party or Chinese people being, being brainwashed in China. So this allow people to see, oh, this is <clears throat> the China we like to have as a, as a neighbor, as a, the co-workers in the society, and also as a neighboring country such as India. This is the real China, that's not the communist China. So the, so that's end my, my talk. Uh, I will be more than happy to entertain any questions. Thank you, Professor Senni, for this detailed tale of sordid crimes by Chinese Communist Party. It brings tears to my eyes the suffering of Chinese people at the hands of Chinese Communist Party is of similar proportions how the Nazis treated minorities, especially Jews in that country. So the world has been silent about atrocities on Chinese people who are just following their ancient traditions an ancient culture by the Chinese Communist Party, which wants to continue to capture power for years to come. It was very enlightening and eye-opening talk. Uh, I did not know these details of atrocities and human rights violations and sheer, you know, torture and abuse and things like that. And I think ICHRRF as an international organization makes this commitment that we are not going to keep silent on this issue. And this is our first program on persecution of Falun Gong practitioners, but this certainly will not be the last program till we are able to bring about change in China on ground. So I'm thankful to you uh, but it's very, very sad story about how, you know, monstrosities have been committed on Chinese people by the Chinese Communist Party. Let's start with some question and answers. Uh, the first question is by Christina Boozer. Christina is our director of planning. And the question she has put in the chat function is, this crackdown on seniors seems contradictory to my prior learning that Chinese culture has great respect for their elders. Is this is a deliberate effort to change the culture and values? This is traumatic and impacts of cultural trauma can be long, long lasting intergenerationally. You had tried to answer some of these questions, but this is a very specific question. So Professor Sen, please go ahead. Yeah. Um... Uh, communists, uh, uh, they think their survival is need to destroy Chinese culture and traditional value. The communists are from this radical Europeans, right? They are not from China. They they fundamentally they go against Chinese culture and the value systems. So they they have done the systematically the the political movements to kill learned people, to kill to kill students, and. Uh, religious believers and now Falun Gongs and others ethnic groups. They destroy the culture. For instance, for 10 years of great cultural revolutions, they knock down all these uh, temples and uh, and and the old books and burn the books and uh, and stop the school. The whole country stopped for more than six years. The, in during the six years, nobody go to any school. Okay, then so they went after they destroyed the uh, the culture. They ruined, they grabbed the power. But when they want to do business with uh, the outside, such as uh, United States, they pick up the superficial part of the culture. Okay, for instance, they still have uh, they still have uh, the Buddha. Okay, the, in the temple or Buddhistaba in the temple. But that temple, most of them become a commercial sightseeing place, selling stuff things. Okay, the true believer being 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 pushed aside or being being killed, then, uh, for instance, they force the monk and nun or the, the Taoist to get married. 
and have kids against their fundamental beliefs. The, the, the three bishops they appoint at the Catholic in China that Pope Francis, unfortunately, he allowed the communists to appoint the bishop. Three bishops, uh, all of them get married as a Catholic, okay, with kids and families. So they, they replace the fundamental belief systems of religions of, of a, uh, of a uh, spiritual group replaced by these superficial things. They still call it, for instance, the Christians, they call the patriotic Christians group. Okay, you have to patriot it to the government. Okay, you need to believe communists before Jesus. If you don't, they crack down on you, you become the uh, house Christians. You study Bible at the house, once in a life, once in time, they will they'll arrest you. So they are two, the true believers are, are underground. Uh, the, the surface one are the uh, follower of communist parties. So, uh, so they replace uh, because they want to look good. Okay, just like they dress tuxedos, uh, uh, but they want to look good, but in the essence, they destroy the Chinese against Chinese culture and the value systems. For instance, Chinese cultures, the, the son and daughter respect the parents. Okay, take care of parents. Then it's, it's not the time and respect teachers and professors. Nowadays, the Chinese, they educate brainwash Chinese people. Okay, they can report to the Communist Party of his professor talk out of control in the classroom on, on the criticize the party. They can betray their parents or spouse to report to the communists. So those the essence of the culture, you can you can only see the surface. They also have Buddhas, okay, the temples, okay, look like they are they they, they yeah they they pray pray to Jesus and pray to Buddhas, but they don't really do it, okay. So uh, it's not today. It's um, it's fundamental for seventy two years of ruling. They systematically and very tactically destroyed Chinese culture and the elite of Chinese race. Thank you, Professor Sen, for this informative answer. I don't see any of the questions in the chat function, so I'm going to ask a question. Yes, please. Following the Cultural Revolution, Great Leap Forward, re-education camps, when Chinese culture, Chinese history, and ancient traditions were systematically demolished by the first, second generation of Communist Party of China leaders. The current fifth generation leadership is paradoxically actually usurping the Chinese history and Chinese culture and trying to invoke Taoism, Buddhism, and you know Confucius thought, and trying to pass off the core leader as quote unquote the divine leader of China. So there seems to be some transformation that they are going to use any tactic to befool the people, and that is what the current leader is doing by going for a third term trying to invoke his right as the divine ruler of the Middle Kingdom. Any comments? Uh, yes, I just want to add one more thing. It's uh, uh, the infiltration of uh, communist ideology and uh, communist uh, uh, political power into the United States and the free world is, has been very serious. It's more than people can think, okay? And we, we have a big company want to do business, make money with them. So even with mainstream, uh, mainstream media, so they don't necessarily report all these truths. Okay, what I presented today, what you see in the media is, is they have to, they have to do something politically correct to the communists. Okay, there's uh, all the thing that you don't see. So uh, I'm very grateful for the chance to to share with others. But otherwise, a lot of things you don't see on the open media's. It's our media, it's, uh, our mainstream media. Uh, they have a taboo. They don't, they they don't, they don't cover. 
even with our government, like State Department, they don't talk anything start with F, which is Falun Gong. They try to minimize that because they have some degree, they have some understanding with communists, they want to do collaborations. So, so it's a, um, on the surface, you don't see that. Uh, for instance, uh, if you see a, a Chinese uh, abroad or in China, on the surface, it looks very normal. Okay, particularly they are at home with good friends. They talk way as close to uh, Chinese. But when uh, when they are in public at the work, they have a different personality show off. They show lawyer to the party. They do things. They crack down on people. So probably each and every Chinese has split personality, has two faces. One is for the public. One is for him or herself. Okay, if you see, uh, if you see, if you go to the big city in China, you see, well, the high rise buildings, uh, the, all this transportation are very good. China is very modern, right? It's just like you see the model house when you want to buy the house. Your house hasn't been built yet, but you look at the model house, you like the house. But in China too, most of the <clears throat> most of the foreigners. Uh, uh, Visit China is probably only covered five percent or ten percent of the country, and that five percent is uh, those famous places they design. They just just like model house for you to see. You don't see the whole pictures. Okay, the representation not only for Falun Gong and for most of the other things, the real things in China are being biased, destroyed in the United States even. Okay, everywhere. So it is our jobs to. To 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 find the truth to share with others, okay. Even this grassroots efforts, uh, we we need to do that. There's a similar question from our executive director Carl Clemens. Uh, with the establishment of Confucius Institutes in the last decade, there's a talk of CCP being more open to reintroducing traditional Chinese culture back into mainstream. Thus, uh, this signal a change in Chinese policy of traditional spirituality as well in the same dimension. I did not see the question, but maybe you can give a comment on this. Uh, uh, <clears throat> you probably know about the Confucius, uh, Confucius Institute. Uh, there were more than 100, like 130 Confucius Institute in colleges or even, even high school, right? Which is the, the government allowed them to do. But in the Confucius Institute, they don't talk about the Confucius. They knock down Confucius. They only talk about the Chinese languages, simplified Chinese language being, they teach Chinese languages, they teach uh, communist ideology things. So Confucius Institute is more like uh, the branch of CCP abroad. Okay, they try to influence those innocent young people, uh, the college students about what is China. They don't respect Chinese cultures. They they teach people say, the, the before communists China was very bad, poor. Those are bad guys, the fightings, everything, everything. But this is not the case. They don't teach the real things. So Confucius, uh, uh, since the uh, the recent um, administrations that uh, they realize that they cut the ties. So I think probably two thirds of the Confucius Confucius Institute has been. Close down. They've been used. This is United Front of CCP in our college. So there's a, one of the things they don't really respect Confucius, okay. but they use name of Confucius, and to 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 bluff those uh, people don't know much, look like they are authentic about the Chinese Confucianism, okay? But actually they don't. They hate communists. During the Cultural Revolution, they knocked down the. Confucius old home, the whole building's been knocked down, burn the book, okay, and say this one is an anti-revolution, Confucius. Okay, old people learned about the Confucianism has been knocked down as a, a traitor. So after after uh, after 20, 30 years, they realized they need to use that as a uh, as a packaging. They use Confu Confucius become their packaging. Look like they respect they don't. Thanks okay. a lot for that answer. There is a two part question by one of the viewers, Urmi. One is that whether any cases have been filed by practitioners of Falun Gong 
in the International Criminal Court. And second part of the question is, why don't Chinese citizens revolt against the CCP rule? What is the second question again? What is the Chinese why citizens? Why don't the Chinese people revolt against the Communist Party rule? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, the second question first is, uh, the, the, there's no uh, the democracy in China. Uh, people has no uh, no opportunity to vote. Uh, if they have an election at the village levels or the local level, they are, they are only one person elect for one position. It's being assigned. Okay, so uh, they don't have the the democracies to vote for their choice. They can only vote, not by hand, by their legs. They're running away, escape from China. That's their vote. You see many people, uh, if it's not ruling elite, once they leave China, they will never go back. Yes, this, uh, so people don't, uh, people are not given the, the rights of freedoms to choose their own leaders or systems. Is totally prohibited. Uh, I'm sorry. What was the first question? First question was whether anyone has filed any cases in the international okay. criminal court at the Hague. Yeah, through the uh, through the past twenty some years, uh, there are uh, more than fifty lawsuits internationally go against those perpetrators. The lawsuit is uh, primarily for each country, so those spread over uh, Taiwan. Uh, United States, Canada, so Europe, they are about, I think, in the order of 50 lawsuits against like Jiang Zemin and Luo Gan and others. So, um, <clears throat> and uh, some of the lawsuits won because they, the, yeah, the the perpetrator, they are not to stand up for the court, okay? Just absence from the court is automatic one. But some of this is pending. And so they are lawsuit uh, primarily by Falun Gong practitioner, but there are not that many just upright uh, legal entities want to really help on this. Okay, but but even though this uh, the law system of the United Nations or of the of the whole world is not working very well to against these perpetrators. Okay, but the law lawsuit really terrify them. They dare not to go outside China. If they have records of uh, of, 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 of of okay persecuted uh, Falun Gong practitioner, we have an organization called WarPAC document each and every perpetrators. Okay, and we have about uh, uh, more than I think eight hundred thousand perpetrators who commit certain crimes against communists, but against the part Falun Gong practitioner. But we only have lawsuit against the head, the top leaders. But we issue the notice of so and so. For instance, uh, uh, for instance, uh, last month they were, last month and last July and August, two months in the in two months there are eighteen people tortured to death, confirmed. Then we issue the we issue the notice around the world that who are the bad guy, committing the death of this innocent people. When this guy coming out, there was. We will file a lawsuit against them to to grab them. So, in a sense, you don't see that many leaders of communists can come out, particularly those people with blood debt with Falun Gong. Uh, they can only hide in China. Okay, once they come out, we serve the yeah we 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 serve the paper. We'll grab them. Well, we are running short of time. We are already exceeding our time. But I must say that on behalf of ICHRRF, we'll undertake, we undertake to conduct special hearings on this issue in coming future months. So we'll stay in touch with you. Again, this was an eye-opening lesson for the entire international community, how Communist Party of China is committing atrocities on its own people on such a massive scale. And I think time has come when international community needs to invoke enough is enough 
we don't want your you know chinese you know mercantile dollars in investments in our countries in bri and things like that and we need to put an end to these practices yeah. on a more positive note i am very very hopeful that organizations like shenyun and falun gong team together at least internationally so we create a positive image of an ancient civilization that has been usurped misappropriated by communist party of china which is a gang of murderous individuals thank you very much indeed for taking time off and i am promising you this is your first time on our platform but this is certainly not the last time we need people like you who are courageous brave can speak for religious freedom and can speak against the repression of totalitarian regimes however powerful they may be so i really thank you i admire you for your courage for coming out openly on our platform and we can talk in future thank you very much indeed sir yeah well thank you it's my honors and pleasure to do that i hope uh, if anybody like to know more information about it or about my powerpoint slides i'll be more than happy to share okay all the topic we touch upon all the harvestings and you know trade on movements or the persecutions um, please pay attention to that okay falun gong is the only group so far not being eradicated by ccp and get even stronger so the recordings of this program would be available on our website as well as on our YouTube channel. And with those comments, I'm ending this meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.